If you find yourself modeling similar layouts again and again, such as toilet room layouts or the lift bank of an office core, you may want to take a look at the assembly tool. The assembly tool was originally developed to create mechanical assemblies, which are often made up of a number of small parts. But we quickly realized that libraries of assemblies could be useful for all disciplines. As an architect, I think it makes a lot of sense to create assembly models of areas of a building, like toilet rooms, that have fairly standard layouts with a lot of critical relationships between objects that need to be maintained. In the past, you may have created cells for this purpose. However, a cell remains a cell when placed in the model, and the objects within a cell are not tracked in the schedule dialog. An assembly is automatically placed as a set of individual objects. Therefore, there is no chance that the objects remain buried in a cell and don't get tracked in your schedules. Everything can be not only modified after placement, but scheduled in the Schedules dialog. So let's take a look at how to create an assembly. I have modeled several different configurations of lifts as typically used in a high-rise tower. I have banks of two, three, and four lifts with a standard size lift lobby. Now note on the ribbon that there is a Place Assembly tool, but not a Create Assembly. The Create Assembly tool will not be available until there is a selection set that has items with data group data on them. So I will create a selection set of my first group of lifts, then select the Create Assembly tool. I will give the assembly a name. I need to select a destination. This can be the work set, the workspace, or the organization data set. I am using the work set. The discipline determines where the cell library will get stored. I can add them to the default library, or I could create a new library. It makes some sense to group your assemblies into different libraries, particularly if you might want to move or copy certain groups of assemblies to different work sets. So I will create a new library named Lifts. Next, I need to define the placement point. So I will use the center of the lift lobby. Once that is done, I can select OK, and the assembly is created. Now I can continue to make additional assemblies for each group of lifts. OK, now maybe you're wondering where these actually got stored. So let me show you that quickly. If I go to the Backstage, I can right-click on my current design file and open the location in File Explorer. This will get me to the Work Set folder. I can browse to the Standards folder, then the Cell folder, and under that is an Assembly folder. Then Folders for each discipline, and under the Architecture folder, I will find my new lifts.cel library. Note that I have also created several other libraries for furniture layouts and toilet rooms. And just a tip, these are the same as any other cell library and can be opened and the geometry modified from within the cell library if modifications are needed later. OK, now let's place the assembly. I'll open a new design model. I'll select the Place Assembly tool set the discipline to architecture. From the pull-down, I can see a list of all the assemblies created from all the cell libraries under the architecture folder. So I can see I have some furniture groupings, the lift banks that I just created, and a few toilet rooms, including an ADA toilet stall that I laid out. So I'll just select the 2 plus 2 lift bank and place it in my model. Note that I can change the placement point prior to placement if needed. Once placed, the assembly is no longer grouped. Each object can be modified as necessary to fit into the design. The space shape can be modified, the wall heights can be adjusted, and the lifts could even be resized if necessary. 
but I was able to get a placeholder in the model to get started. Now let's place a few more. I could quickly add a toilet room model, and then modify the pieces and parts to fit the floor plan. Another use might be to create common furniture groupings so that I can quickly add interior layouts on my floor plans. If you do restaurants, you might want some typical table layouts with standard spacings between the tables. This would save time every time you needed to do the seating layout. Note that in this case, I actually included some of those spacing dimensions in the assembly for quick reference. They could be turned off or deleted later. Again, once placed, the layout could be modified to fit the design. Now that we have placed those assemblies, let's take a look at our Schedules dialog. If I take a look at the Furniture Schedule, I already have a list of all the furniture with data that was already assigned to the objects before creating the assembly. And now it could be easily modified here in the Schedules dialog. Same is true for the lifts and even things like toilet accessories and toilet partitions that were added when I added the toilet room assembly. Building a library of assemblies for your most commonly used layouts, such as hotel guest rooms, classrooms, or even kitchen layouts, will allow you to quickly lay out building models using the assemblies as a starting point or just to make sure you consistently stick to the correct standards and relationships between elements. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.